Hello everyone. Welcome to IIT Jam Chemistry tutorial number 25 and this is lecture number 3 of the physical chemistry chapter liquid state and this lecture number 3 is actually the second lecture on surface tension where we are going to discuss contact angle, capillary rise and capillary fall and weighting of surface. Let's start with the definition of contact angle. The definition of contact angle is when a liquid is on a solid surface then the angle between the tangent to the liquid surface at the point of contact and the solid surface inside the liquid is called the contact angle for the solid liquid pair. This part is very important, solid liquid pair. So the term surface tension is actually technically not correct term. It should be said better as the interfacial tension because every two faces have a common surface and then that phase has some pull towards any one of the phases. So that is the surface tension of that of those two pairs. So for a liquid which is open in the air, it also has a common surface with air and the liquid. And that is actually the interfacial surface of water with respect to air if the liquid is water. So technically surface tens tension term is not correct. It should be better said as interfacial tension. Now let's have a look at the picture here. This is a liquid drop on some solid surface. Say it's water on glass surface. And this is another liquid drop on another solid surface. Say it is water on lotus leaf or mercury on glass surface. Now this point and this point are the points of contact where the liquid and solid are in contact with each other. So this point and particularly this point also. Now let's draw a tangent along the surface of the liquid. So this is the tangent here and this is the tangent here. Now through the liquid, through, through inside the surface of the liquid, inside the bulk of the liquid, this is this angle, this is the contact angle. This is the solid surface, then through the bulk of the liquid, up to the tangent this angle this is called the contact angle here also this is called the, called the contact angle one thing you must mark here that this angle is an acute angle here and this angle is an obtuse angle here why we shall discuss this later on and this is denoted as theta so contact angle is denoted as this one theta okay now let's illustrate this as i have said that the term con the term surface tension is actually technically incorrect we should better say this as interfacial tension so between any two common any two different phases may it, it may be solid and liquid it may be solid and gas or it may be solid and uh, gas and liquid so between these two different phases the common part of the surface we have to take into consideration and along that common part of the surface there must be some inward pull of force of attraction towards any one of the phase and that is called the interfacial tension now here at, at this point c there are three force vectors due to surface tension these three types of tensions are here along this uh, on this point of contact this one this is the tension due to solid gas interface. This is the solid, this is gas, okay. Along this line, this is the tension due to solid liquid interface. This is the liquid part, this is the solid part. And along this tangent, this is the interfacial tension due to liquid gas interface. So this is the tension due to liquid gas interface. These three vectors have some resultant vector. So let's calculate what is the value at equilibrium you see at equilibrium this point will be stationary so this the summation of these three points must be same so we have to take the component of this vector only then add up with this one or this one okay then the summation should be equal to zero at equilibrium because the liquid drop once when it is formed on a solid surface it, it, it is not further moving anymore that means it is at equilibrium so the summation of these three vectors are zero so we should be better write this as gamma so solid gas minus gamma solid liquid minus gamma liquid gas cos theta because it's this component 
this component horizontal component must be this one into cos theta because the angle between these two lines are theta okay let's see how we do this and here one we must say that uh, the solidification of a liquid on solidification of liquid suppose you are solidified a liquid suppose water has been converted into ice okay but it does not lose its surface tension ice also has a surface tension that means here one question should have arise that why should a solid have a surface tension the fact is that yes solid has a surface tension definitely but its manifestation outward manifestation is not observed why it is not observed because of its rigidity okay here look at this picture this is the liquid surface and above that liquid surface there are gases also now you can say that gases are not attracting the liquid molecules the answer is yes but since this attract force of attraction is very much feeble that means very much weak so we are not showing this and we are showing the inward pull towards the bulk direction okay so between the liquid and the gas okay this is the interfacial tension between liquid gas gamma lg okay between this point here this interfacial tension between solid and liquid here some capillary rise type of rise would take place due to its adhesive force so all these things we must uh, we are we are going to discuss here so solid gas sub interfacial tension between solid gas solid liquid liquid gas all are possible okay so at the point of contact c there are three vectors arising out due to surface tension these vectors are surface tension at solid gas interface gamma solid gas sg gamma solid liquid and gamma liquid gas the resultant vector what is the resultant vector now gamma solid gas minus gamma solid liquid that means this one minus this one minus the cos theta of this one so gamma liquid gas cos theta so these three when summed up at equilibrium this must be equal to zero so we have equated this with zero and the final result is cos theta equal to gamma solid gas minus gamma solid liquid the whole term is divided by gamma liquid gas now let's analyze this equation and this is equation number four as the part of continuation from the previous lectures look this is equation number four we have carried forward this to the next slide now case one this is case one here you can see that this part has gone little bit widespread the squeezing tendency has been overpowered by the spreading tendency so that means suppose you uh, you pour a drop of liquid uh, water on the floor or on some glass surface so the water would wet this this is actually wetting takes place so here the adhesive force is greater than the cohesive force so the squeezing tendency has been overpowered by the spreading tendency squeezing tendency arises out due to cohesive force and the spreading tendency arises out due to adhesive force okay let's see how this is uh, this can be applied in this equation number four here here gamma solid gas is greater than gamma solid liquid okay and that is why this one is greater than this one so cos theta is positive and cos theta positive means theta is less than 90 degree and less than 90 degree means it's an acute angle case one and what about case two uh -huh. yes one th one more thing the liquid weights the solid so that means weighting takes place here and what is case two as i've said addition is greater than cohesion and for water the contact angle is 18 degree at room temperature and one thing i must mention at 25 degree room temperature the surface tension of water is 72 9 per centimeter in the cgs unit and case two now case two here this angle is obtuse angle so naturally here this one must be less than this one resulting in cos theta negative and theta greater than 90 degree isn't it look so here the gamma solid gas is less than gamma solid liquid cos theta is negative so theta is greater than 90 degree and an obtuse angle is obtained and no wetting takes place suppose you have a drop of mercury on a glass surface and that case you will find that the tendency of the drop has greater 
in forming a liquid drop rather than spreading that means the squeezing tendency overpowers spreading tendency that means here cohesive force is greater than adhesive force that means cohesion is greater than adhesion so mercury has the contact angle 140 degree at room temperature so i hope this part is clear to all of you next the capillary effect the capillary rise and capillary fall so when you take a very uh, a tube of very small radius which are known as the capillaries you know suppose the refill of your pen is it's empty refill of your pen just um, just uh, immerse it in water okay or if you have mercury then immerse it in mercury you will find either capillary rise or capillary fall how do they look they look like this this is capillary rise and this is capillary fall where the contact angle is acute angle less than 90 degree that means adhesion is greater than cohesion for example water on glass then capillary rise would take place and the meniscus this is known as the meniscus this would be concaved on the other hand where wetting does not take place that means the contact angle is an obtuse angle that means greater than 90 degree that means the squeezing tendency is greater than the spreading tendency for example mercury on glass capillary then capillary fall would take place here the meniscus would look like a convex surface okay you know this capillary action how much powerful is that the plants can take up water from the soil you know which action is responsible for this that is the capillary action through the root the water goes into the top of the plant up to the leaf so this is due to capillary effect the xylem the xylem tissues of the root of the plant their capillary action capillary rise takes place and due to that capillary rise water enters the roots of the plant and goes up to the leaf of the plant only through capillary rise effect so this is very much naturally uh, very much powerful effect and this is very much effective useful also for our living now accurate treatment for capillary rise here is the bulk of the liquid where a capillary has been immersed this is the point of contact here is this is the tangent so this is the contact angle theta r is the radius of the capillary here gamma is the surface tension and it is working in this direction it has two components if this angle is theta then it's opposite this angle is also theta so this component is gamma cos theta and this component is gamma sin theta now this height is h rho is the density of the liquid and gamma is the surface tension now at equilibrium the excess pressure due to surface tension would be equal to the gravitational pull due to uh, this liquid column so there are two vectors working one is pull towards the upward direction due to surface tension another pull towards the down downward direction due to gravity so upward pull due to surface tension let's calculate this and this is at equilibrium equal to the downward pull due to weight of the liquid column let's calculate this the upward pull due to surface tension must be equal to twice pi r gamma cos theta why twice pi r gamma cos theta look this component towards the vertical direction is gamma cos theta now what is the circumference of the capillary where the liquid is in contact with the glass surface the liquid is in contact with the glass surface has the circumference twice pi r if r is the radius of the capillary so it is the length and this is surface tension so when surface tension is multiplied by length then it becomes the dimension of force so this is the force vector so this is the upward pull due to surface tension now what about the downward pull here at downward pull it is due to the weight of this liquid column now if the 
volume of this liquid column is pi r square h then it is v rho g isn't it now there are two volumes one is due to the cylindrical part and another is due to the liquid within this meniscus within this curvature so let us assume that this volume within this curvature is v so it is volume into rho g so this is the downward pull so this is volume into rho g what is the overall volume pi r squared h this is the cylindrical part and this is the curvature part so this volume plus this volume is the overall volume and v rho g is the downward pull due to gravity these two at equilibrium are equal now let us calculate the volume of this curved meniscus v okay so v is the volume of the liquid within the curved meniscus so how we should calculate this we have to take the volume of this small cylindrical part and deduct the volume of this hemisphere from this volume of the cylindrical part then this remaining volume would be the volume of the liquid within the concave meniscus okay so this is the difference between the volume of the cylindrical capillary with height h uh, i'm sorry with height r minus volume of the hemisphere so what is the volume of the cylindrical capillary with height r this is the height r so this is the this is the assumption that the radius of curvature is equal to the radius of the capillary we have to mention that okay so this is now playing the role of height this distance r and the surface area is pi r squared so r into pi r squared minus volume of hemisphere so what is the volume of hemisphere the volume of the volume volume of the whole sphere is 4 by 3 pi r cube so half into 4 by 3 pi r cube is the volume of the hemisphere so the difference between them is the volume of the liquid within the concave meniscus so look this is r is the height and pi r square is the surface area and here 4 by 3 pi r cube is the volume of the hemisphere and its half volume uh, volume of the sphere and its half volume is the volume of the hemisphere so the difference between these two is the volume of the liquid within the curved meniscus and this is nothing but 1 by 3 pi r cube here we have to mention that the radius of curvature is equal to the radius of capillary. Now, in this picture, we know that twice pi r gamma cos theta equals to pi r square h plus v. Instead of v, we have put here one third pi r cube into rho g. Now, on mathematical procedure, proper way, we can proceed like this. Here, gamma pi r is uh, taken separately here also pi r taken as common then this pi r pi r in the left hand side and right hand side would be cancelled by each other so here the left the terms which are left are gamma into twice cos theta and here from this bracket if you take r as common then it only the h plus one third r this part is left and outside the bracket r rho g and thus you can get the expression of gamma and denote it as equation number five this equation number 5 written here separately h plus one third r into r rho g over twice cos theta so this is equation number 5 now some special cases in this tabular form here if the weight of the liquid in the curved meniscus is neglected that means this volume and the weight due to this liquid has been neglected so this part must be neglected so one third r would be vanished here so what is left h into r rho g over twice cos theta so gamma equal from equation number five becomes here twice cos theta so two is separately written so it can be written as half into h r rho g cos theta over cos theta this is equation number five a now if theta tends to zero that means if it is completely a hemisphere then definitely this contact angle must be zero so if theta tends to 0 then cos theta tends to 1 and in that case this takes the form equation number 5b where cos theta is written as 1 so it is half into h plus one third r into r rho g and finally both the above approximations together if you take them together that means neglecting the volume and theta tends to uh, 0 that means cos theta tends to 1 then it becomes gamma equals to half h r rho g this is equation number 5c so that's all for this lecture number two of service tension and have a nice day.